<sighs> okay. Anyway. So I have some questions for you. Okay, um, I have one uh, discussion topic, but we alternate, so let's let's go to you. Well, I've I've done them a lot in the past. I would like to hear what you have. Oof! All right, <laughs> let's get into <laughs> yeah. it. You're like I lost it. <laughs> Whoa! I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I was bluffing. I don't have. Any. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I thought we were going to run. I went all <laughs> in, and you called my bluff. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Okay, so a little background. I've been uh, recently listening to the Paul Simon album, Graceland. As one does. Great album. Uh, he recorded it in South Africa during apartheid. Mm -hmm. Really great As album one does. for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. Lots of fun. Mm -hmm. Well, what you want to do is not necessarily what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so perfect. It's the, uh, it's the tagline for Paul Simon's life. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, the Graceland. The Graceland. Uh, yeah, so I've been listening to that, um, and there's a song in it. Uh, it's a, a rather famous song. I believe it was his last number one hit uh, called You Can Call Me Al. Uh, very fun <laughs> so, song. So no, it's, funny. It's yeah. actually, so there's actually a really funny story behind it, uh, and I can't remember. I remember the story. I can't remember one of the people in it. Uh, it was it was some um, conductor. It was like a, a, a famous um, classical conductor. They John were at Williams. a party. No, <laughs> let's not play this game of just saying a <laughs> yeah. bunch of names. <laughs> it's it's fun because it, I, I know that's it. <laughs> so yeah, that's the only conductor I know. Yeah, uh, no, it was I don't know. I think it was like some German guy. Shout out German. Yay! What if it's the one, <laughs> that's the one guy? Who was yeah, terrifying. it was this conductor. He's like, it's uh, me, it's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did it. Remember my name. Say my name. Uh, anyway, so the story behind the mm -hmm. uh, the the thing is uh, they were at this party. Paul Simon and his wife. I don't remember her name. Uh, I'm not doing it well with the names this morning. <laughs> and um, they, uh, this this conductor that they knew, mm -hmm. um, had to leave the party. And he said he went up to Paul Simon and said, "Like I have to go, Al. Give my love to Betty." And his name was Paul Simon, and <laughs> yeah. his wife's name is not Betty. <laughs> and so he wrote a song about that. And uh, it's it's a great song, very fun. The music video is very fun. Chevy Chase is in the music video for some reason. Yeah, um, yeah. I've, I've seen the video because I, I I have a funny video that I want to show you that's about this song. Interesting. Okay, lovely. Uh, so that's not exactly the uh, the, the topic though. So there is. Um, like, I was watching. So I was making dinner, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> and I used yeah. a little bit too much garlic salt. Was <laughs> <laughs> Um. So I was I was listening to the song and I was watching uh, you know on Spotify they have those like uh, like genius things that come up and give like a little bit of lyrics and also a little bit I don't uh, know that but I trust you and okay I know what those yeah are. they give you a little bit of lyrics a little mm -hmm. bit of uh, some uh, some fun some trivia regular. <laughs> some regular oh regular regular uh, about the song trivia about the song and, and background and everything like that a very nice service. Mm -hmm. um, and they were talking about that there was an interview with Paul Simon and he was talking about one of the verses in the song. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you don't have to understand it. He was like, he's like, I, you know, it doesn't have some sort of deeper meaning. I just liked the way he basically just, again, I'm not, it's not a direct quote, but it's like, I just like the way the words sounded. I just liked writing that verse mm -hmm. and then I put it to music and it fit. And that was it. Mm -hmm. And that was interesting to me because I feel like my uh, idea a lot of the time with artists like Paul Simon, not musically, but uh, who are rather uh, intellectual, mm -hmm. um, that there is always, you know, some really complex meaning in a lot of the more uh, vague uh, verses that they write. Um, and so I, I was, uh, I was surprised and I, um, so I think that, that my question is sort of how much do you think, uh, how much of that, you know, deeper substance needs to be included in art 
because I'm thinking of like by you the know, artist or by the interpreter. Ooh, uh, interesting. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's talk about both. <laughs> we need to pause for a second. No, uh, I yeah, no. I mean, we can talk about both, but I think I was thinking like there are definitely um, you know paintings that I like that are just you know landscapes that they're just like this is just a painting of some pretty stuff and there are pieces of art that i don't like that have a ton of really specific meaning imbued by the the creator um and so thoughts I, <laughs> <Wegmans>? yeah <laughs> i i <Wegmans>. <laughs> <laughs> Al is Al P Paul Simon playing Al is the Wegman's yeah. Sort of cat. <laughs> yeah, boy. exactly. With, the Wegman's it's me boy. <laughs> with a chiseled jawline. Playing, playing Paul Al. Simon playing Al. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. That's definitely something I've thought about, especially with music and jazz. It's like yeah. how much um of jazz is like actually deep intentional meaning when a lot of it is just improvisatory and something that somebody thought up on the spot it's um i don't know i don't, i think art is just a reflection of the lives that we live and if your life is sort of random and doesn't need to be understood and you're fine without analyzing it you can present that as art and people might relate to it you know what i mean like yeah. some people for sure just are like moseying on through life being happy with everything that's going on and it's like they they could make art that just like reflects that where it's just like yeah this is the way things are you don't have to necessarily read into it too much um but i mean again uh art sort of becomes a third party in the whole thing where it's like the art is in between the artist and the interpreter where the art just exists as a standalone thing and if you in, if you interact with the art you're going to have a different interpretation every single time than the person that interpreted it right even though even though your interpretation might be exactly what the artist was thinking your experience and feeling with the art is going to be right. different than their experience with it and creating it so um i don't see this whole idea where you need to interpret it exactly as it's it's sort of like the bruce lee uh let me look up this bruce lee quote okay. um absorb what is useful discard what is useless and add what is specifically your own mm -hmm. and then yeah i think I, nice. I don't know i think that that makes sense with art and interpreting art you know what i right. mean right yeah so you that's yeah. that's what happens you absorb what you think is cool about the art you don't really care about certain elements that might have been important to the artist right. but then you imbue your own specific um viewpoint on the world with the art so it's yeah. like all three of those things combine and who knows yeah no i sort of took that in a completely different direction no than it, what was, you it was good no 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 you make a very many many a good point um speak it plain I, yes uh, i think um because i you know i was thinking like with with things like uh mozart versus something like um strauss let's mm. say mozart very it's very much you know a there common was a debate you know yeah classic uh, who would win <laughs> um yeah. Uh, yeah. who would win if they were dogs and they had to fight but <laughs> they had to first start a fortune 500 company oh man the would you rather... <laughs> mozart versus strauss mm -hmm. uh Mozart very much it, like there is a, you know some uh like use to his music it was based on a lot of like traditional uh like dances and, and structures like that um but with Strauss there he does a lot of like programmatic music where it is supposed to tell a story mm -hmm. you know it, like he uses boring <laughs> boring <laughs> 
<laughs> no, 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 but there's a thing. <laughs> listen, it's great. Yeah. Uh, please listen. Um, we should do like a picketing riot. Like Strauss <laughs> is cool. Strauss, listen. <laughs> um, anyway, but uh, but obviously Mozart is still very you know pleasing to listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the other thing I was thinking that you know that music art in general i would say uh the superficial can be just as valuable as the uh whatever that other level is whatever you know deeper meaning underficial <laughs> underficial yeah subficial um <laughs> Sub <-fish. laughs> uh that really should be what it is anyway um under fish oil yeah <laughs> below fish um Philip's uh, Philip's Hebrew name is Fischl. Are you serious? Yes, Fischl oh Binyamin. <laughs> That's great. Is Fischl a like an actual Jewish name? Yeah. You learn something every day. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all true. Do I need to read into that? Does that mean? Something? <laughs> yeah. Is there a meaning behind yeah, that? Yeah, it, it, um, me it means it, the tr the direct translation from uh, into English is hairy boy. <laughs> <laughs> It's Harry it boy like it. hit things. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, but again, the the the, the superficial, the aesthetic mm -hmm. uh, sort of aspect of uh, art can be just as important and um, effective as any sort of deeper meaning that the artist might, you know, want to uh, imply or that the interpreter might interpret. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't, I, I don't feel like qualified to talk about art, especially like, <laughs> let's talk about gender instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but sorry. yeah, especially like art, art, you know what I mean? Like, art, art, art. <laughs> art, art. <laughs> Georgie, <laughs> yeah. um. Yeah, I think of yeah. my barber art. <laughs> I don't feel qualified to talk art, about art. art. <laughs> it's uh, two people named Art. I don't feel qualified to talk and, about. And they both are barbers. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if I were to rank the things that I feel qualified to talk about, it would be art all the way on the bottom. Mm. Okay, and then probably wow. like theater. Like, oh, okay. No idea. <laughs> yeah. um, M movies mm, true movies and music that are, isn't jazz are probably like equal and then music that is jazz you know what i mean yeah it's like that's the hierarchy and art yeah. is all the way at the bottom um art garfunkel is somewhere in the <laughs> yeah he's somewhere in there art art <laughs> yeah it, your barber I, art <laughs> and art garfunkel <laughs> As a duo, God, that would be so great. God, that um, would be so great. Oh, the so breaking loud. news one is always much louder. Um, <laughs> much louder. We got a uh, yeah. Well, uh, question of the day. I was thinking about this in the shower. Mm -hmm. uh, is <laughs> Nina Simone still alive? I think she is. Yeah, I think she is. Right. I was thinking back to our Nina Simone. Oh, Art no, Garfunkel she died. Oh, she died in when? 2003. Oh, wow. That was a while ago. I didn't yeah. know that. All right. She, 1993 to 2003. That's pretty good, right? 70 years? Wait, what did you just say? That's pretty good. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought you said 1993 to 2003. Yeah, that's how long. That's the from, from birth to death. Like 1990. No. What? You're saying oh, 1993. Oh, 1993. <laughs> I was like, that's definitely not. I'm like, she you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, what's the problem? She was a 10-year-old girl. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Uh, okay, can I show you the this video? About, please. Um... <laughs> okay, hopefully you find this funny. It's pretty short. Um... Where is this? What the heck? Go ahead. Why can't I see this? 
Are you okay? Can you see this? Yeah. You can, how, how Paul oh, said. I love this guy. Oh, okay, sorry. Paul. Okay, Paul, we're going to go ahead and do the verses now for You Can Call Me Al. Oh, okay. Oh, hold on one second. <laughs> hi, hi there, Mom. How you doing today? No, I'm doing all right. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it. Listen, you know what I saw today, Mom? I saw a man walk down the street and he had one of them ice cream cones. You know, the kind with the fudge tip and the chocolate inside. That's where you got that ice cream cone. He told me on 3rd Street I got one. It was good. You know who I saw after that? It was Ricky Hamilton from 3rd grade. No, 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 not the one that showed me his penis on the playground. The other Ricky. No, I don't remember if he had a boner. Boner. I don't even know if you can get those in 3rd grade. Anyway, we had a couple of exchange words and then we went on a separate ways we're here in the studio now doing a song no mom so i gotta hang up so i love you very much sincerely your son paul simon bye okay i'm ready no we got it <laughs> that's so good and it's very accurate yeah yeah the so actual so lyrics funny. in the song yeah that's good uh okay well <laughs> Uh. It's the speaker knockers. Time on the track.